This is the start of Revelation 12 timeline, and I will tell you that for the watcher of this, it's going to seem rather, rather weird because I'm going to piece this together so that I can do certain videos and add them into this. So my outfit may change, my seating position may change, and certainly the light outside is most likely going to change during this video. And you could even see it go back and forth. Um, when we come to Revelation 12, which is the timeline chapter of the Tribulation, and before we get into here, let's define certain terms so that we're, that we're all the same, so we're all on the same page. When I use the term Tribulation, I'll refer to the seven-year Tribulation, so I may in fact say seven-year Tribulation. If I'm talking about the three and a half years prior to the Great Tribulation, Great Tribulation is the last three and a half years, and that three and a half year period prior to the Great Tribulation, which is also normally called Tribulation, I will refer to it as Jacob's Trouble. Just so we're all, if I say Tribulation, you know I'm talking about a seven year. If I say Jacob's Trouble, you know I'm talking about the first three and a half years and then Great Tribulation in the last three and a half years. Um, now, after defining the terms for that, let's define how you count from year to year. Now again, we've got seven years on the tribulation. So if I'm going to count that, let's assume that we're using uh, the Gregorian calendar, which we're not, but just for purposes of argument, uh, and I'll do this on the Gregorian calendar, that way we can all kind of look at it for quick reference. Um, but realize when we go back to the kingdom, we'll be back on the Hebraic calendar. But if I go from year to year, and for the seven year tribulation period, okay? And I know one of the items on one side or the other, okay? If I know the beginning day, then I would go um, seven years and come to the day before that to define seven years. Because if I do, if I hit the same day at the end, then I've went a year, seven years in one day. Just like when we, you know, if you do your taxes, they say, from January 1st to December 31st, because that's year to year. If you said January 1st to January 1st, then it'd be a year and one day. So on this, for the purposes of the countdown, and most of us will realize that the Messiah is going to return on trumpets. And because we know certain things at the beginning, we can actually identify the end if those signs we're watching are correct. So we can actually lock in the day of trumpets of, of when the Messiah returns. And since we know he's going to return on trumpets, whatever the starting point is has to be right after trumpets seven years earlier. It should start one day after trumpets seven years earlier. And in Revelation 12, it does start one day after trumpets. Um, and the sign in the sky that starts Revelation 12 is this great sign. So let's kind of read that through. Um, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. And so I'm gonna show you a video or a picture here of that situation that occurred. And I'm going to, as well, I'm going to hit the second verse here because it's so important to understanding what was going on here. She was pregnant and cried out, in, this verse 2, she was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Now, this is a special sign that happened in the sky on September 23rd, 2017. Day of Trumpets 2017 was September 22nd. So the following day, September 23rd is when this starts. Okay? So that fits if God is going to do things and he is perfect and he's going to count things off. This is how he would do it. He would go if if the Messiah is returning on trumpets, he would start the 7 years the day after trumpets 7 years earlier. And he did. Assuming this sign is correct. Okay, because trumpets was September 22nd, 2017, so he starts a sign September 23rd, 2017. 
so that we can start our seven-year period. Okay. Um, and certain, if you will research things, some scientists will say, yes, this is an amazing sign, but it does happen about every 250 years. Well, that's still a great sign if it happens every 250 years, but the problem is they have not considered one issue here, which actually makes it an amazing sign, and that is Jupiter was in retrograde, okay? And I'll explain retrograde, but Jupiter being in retrograde, when the, the constellation Virgo is in this alignment, has happened once in 7,000 years and won't happen again for another 7,000 years. That's what is such an amazing thing of what happened. So it's once in 7,000 years, won't happen another 7,000. So in the entire span of human history, this has never occurred before. Now, what is retrograde? Okay, Retrograde is when a planet appears to be going backwards. Okay. Because things will revolve, you know, things go around the sun, um, and our planet goes around the sun. The outer planets also revolve around the sun, and because the outer planets don't move as fast to do their, their orbit, we will actually catch, so let's assume that I'm, this finger is Jupiter, okay? And I am on planet Earth, and as we come around the sun, it, you're catching up to it, we're catching up to it, we're catching up to it, and all of a sudden we pass it and then we're going back, okay? Well, this will look, Jupiter then looks to be going backwards because it's in retrograde. That's just because of how we move, because as we're coming up to it and then we pass it, it, it retrogrades and it looks like it goes backwards. It doesn't, it's still going forward. It's just from our vantage point, it will look like it goes backwards for a period of time. and that period of time is fixed. Now, we retrograde the planets all the time. It's what happens because as our movement comes around. So each year as we come around, we will catch Saturn and Saturn will do a retrograde. We'll catch Uranus and Neptune and Jupiter. We'll all see them do a retrograde. Okay. So it's nothing special about the retrograde. What's special is that it retrograded in the constellation Virgo, when this uh, thing was happening, of everything else being in alignment with the moon under her feet, clothed with the sun and all the, the other planets there for the 12 stars, as well as the constellation for Leo. So that's a special sign that happened only once in 7,000 years. Okay. And so I'll show you a little video that I've made to show you what the retrograde would look like. And I've actually done it of how Jupiter went through um, the retrograde action here. Now, with that being said, and now you can see why that was special, okay? And now, what's really special about Jupiter doing that retrograde action is it stayed inside the constellation Virgo for 41 weeks. What's the length of a pregnancy? It's 41 weeks, okay? So when it says the woman cried out and, you know, is about ready to give birth, Virgo, the constellation, was pregnant with the child Jupiter, the king planet. That's certainly a, a, something that is amazing. Now we go back to Genesis as it, when, when the Creator formed the heavens and the earth and he, and he formed the stars. The stars were put there for a certain reason. And those were signs for future generations. Signs for us. That what did we get from Revelation 12? Well, the stars have done what they're supposed to do. They were signs for us. So 
all this worked out very well. So let's look at the next portion of Revelation um, as it pertains to this. Revelation 12.3. Then another sign appeared in heaven. Does it say a great sign or just a sign? Because mine just says another sign. It was nothing special. It's just a sign. Okay. An enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its head. On its heads. Um, and I'll, I'll go to the next verse before I kind of go back on this. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. What we have here is one of the constellations, and there are two constellations that actually fit. We have a crown, which is a Coriolis, one of the constellations. It's very small. It's, it's made of um, these stars on the head. Okay, And so... The dragon has that. Um, again, Revelation 12.3 says seven crowns on its head, and that's how many stars are in this constellation. Okay. Now, we have two separate, because this, this, the crown is here, we have two separate things up and below this crown, which it could be. Either of these constellations would work. One is serpents, which is a serpent, and the other is Draco, the dragon, also known as the red dragon. And immediately you would think, oh, red dragon, red dragon. And that may be. Okay, it, you know, I'm not trying to say it's not the constellation um, Drago. And in fact, there are some other things that would really link it to the constellation Drago here. And so I'll show you here from the constellation Drago where the crown is over its head. And then I'm also going to show you here from the constellation Serpents where the crown is over its head. And I'm going to also show you here how things fit out in the night sky at that time. And basically for all time because I don't have the, the working circle. Excuse me. Uh, uh, where Jupiter was in and everything. So this is a, a vision of just our night sky and will show the relationship from Virgo and Serpents as well as the crown as well as Drago or Draco. Now, um, the interesting part about this is one third of the stars being flung to the earth. Now, if you go back to why the flat earthers began, they began, one of the most things I've seen is from those in our faith, is the belief that you couldn't have one third of the stars hit unless the earth was flat. And most people have said, well, this is something that is, you know, this is a heavenly issue. Those were angels being tossed down. And I don't doubt that they are. But it actually says these things, the stars actually fell. And on October 8th, 2017, this did happen. One third of the stars that we're able to see in the visible universe, we had the Draconoid meteor shower that night, October 8th, 2017, where one third of all the visible stars struck as a meteor shower that night. So that fits what we have from Revelation and it fits what we see from the observable observable universe. This all played into itself. Okay. Now, October 8th, 2017, happened to be a Sunday night. Take that for what you will, that the sign from the dragon, and we think of Satan, we think of serpent, that his sign is on a Sunday. You know, why does the church go to, why do they meet on Sunday? What is it, you know, whereas we are supposed to do it on the Sabbath? Take that for what you will. It's an interesting tidbit. And it may not mean anything. I just found it interesting. Um, now, 
Draco is circumpolar, which means all year round you can see it in the northern hemisphere. Okay, it doesn't drop below um, the horizon. It's beside the Big Dipper. Um, and again, the issue of why I think it may be Serpents is because Serpents is closer to the feet of Virgo. Um, and I think back to Genesis, um, the statement against the serpent is that he's going to bite at the heels. And that's where we see the serpent versus Virgo. And where, again, where Jupiter is leading. Now, um, and so in, Jennifer, in Revelation 12, 5, she gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule, rule all nations with an iron scepter. There's no question who that is, right? I mean, we can all see that's the Messiah. And again, we can see that when the, if we read forward right after or right at the time of Armageddon, when he comes down with the iron scepter. So it's pretty obvious. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. And I want to break here for a minute because that is such an amazing verse. And the reason for it is because if you look at Revelation 12, sorry, Revelation chapter 5, when the seals are, were presented, it said there was nobody in heaven or earth who could, it was nobody on heaven, in heaven or on earth or under the earth who could open the seals. And so he starts crying. And then the Messiah, the Son of Man, the Son of the Creator of the universe, is there at the throne. Words again, at the throne, at the throne. Okay. And so he is now at the throne. Why is that? Because at the, up until that point in time, he was in the heavens. Wherever it's, whether it's above earth to, and below heaven, or whether it's in a region above heaven, don't know, don't care. But he wasn't in heaven at that time, and then he shows up at the throne. And we go back to Revelation 12, 5, and the child was snatched up to God and to his throne. Okay? So it's another aspect of when did the seals, when were they opened? And if we're using the Revelation 12's timeline and we're seeing the sign in the sky on September 23rd, 2017, when was, when did Jupiter leave Virgo? That was October 13th, 2017. That was the completion of the 41 weeks, the length of pregnancy. Okay? And October 13th, 2017, just happened to be the end of Sukkot. Um, and that was a high Sabbath. So we, the birth is on one of God's holy days. Satan was thrown down on, you know, on a Sunday, basically what he would try to say, his day. Okay? Whereas the birth was on, um, was on the end of Sukkot, God's holy day. Um, now, um, the next issue, the woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. That is an amazing thing. I'll show you an online calculator that I've done. And if we take... One thousand two hundred sixty days to October thirteenth, we get March twenty sixth, two thousand twenty one, which is what we see as the day before Passover, and that's an amazing thing because we, as you know, all these things that are in the future days, they can be off by a day because it, when you're in this faith, you realize that every single thing that happens is all dependent upon sighting the moon in from Jerusalem. And we know that from the Day of Trumpets this year. You know, you're, you're looking to see what happened in Jerusalem to see whether they saw the sliver of the moon. And if they did, that starts the month. And that starts every single month. So any of these days, except for <clears throat> Shavuot, which is based upon the, the 50 days after um, first fruits, 
okay? But first fruits is defined as, you know, from the month of Aviv, you know, certain, it's the, the first day of the week, which will be a Sunday, after Passover, and you count off those 49 days, 50 days, so you get, it'd be the first day, or a Sunday, and a, you know, a few weeks in the future, will be Shavuot. But every other thing, because, you know, so when we look on the online calculators right now, or online to see when is Passover in 2021, it's going to say March 27th. <clears throat> but if they see the moon early that month, It'll be March 26th. By the same token, remember there is a slight difference in the way we look at our calendar because the Hebrew day starts at twilight, or at, at when sunset, and the Gregorian calendar starts at midnight. <clears throat> and so that may actually, that may be enough hours to move it over to the 27th as well. I don't know. All I can say is if I'm doing the calculations right now, and I'm doing it from October 13th, I get March 26th. So maybe Aviv is done early that year. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, <clears throat> these other dates that we have in the future as well, for like the Day of Trumpets, remember that could come a little a day early because it depends on when they sight the, the moon. Okay. <clears throat> All of our dates that are in the future, are, we only know things in the past of when they were because we've been able, when been, yeah, we've been able to lock in when the moon was sighted in Jerusalem. For things that are in the future, we do our best estimate of when that will be. But again, we don't know until the moon is sighted. That's how our religion works. If we follow the Bible, that's how we're supposed to do it. <clears throat> so it's kind of amazing that it puts us right there to a Passover. Okay. Um, And then I'm going to go, I'm going to skip a few of these verses and I'm going to go to Revelation 12, 13. When the dragon saw that he had been flung to the, or hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to a place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and half a time out of the serpent's reach. So what we have here in Revelation 12, um, 14 is an indication of the length of the seven-year tribulation because we have up until Passover we have um, from the great sign up until Passover is the first one half of it and then the other which is a times times and half a time which is three and a half years will take us to the future trumpets so from that Passover until the future trumpets three and a half years later is the great tribulation. The other thing that should have really prickled your ears when in Revelation 12, 14, he said, though given the two wings of a great eagle, I hope you heard Exodus in that. Exodus 19, 4. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on, carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. So we have that really locked in, do we not? that are Exodus for those who leave on Exodus because there's multiple groups here. Okay. And I haven't really shown where the, where the groups are yet, but it's very key to understanding the tribulation, seven-year tribulation, um, to understand that there are different groups of us. And we get that from Revelations when it starts talking about the churches. You know, if you look at the second church, they're the persecuted church. It will define that later. It will also, if you look at Revelation 3, ch chapter 3, the first church there, they weren't prepared to leave on Exodus. So they basically are put into the second church. It's kind of weird how that works. Okay? But they have the ability, if they, if they miss the Exodus, or if you miss the Exodus, you still have a chance to get into the kingdom but there's only one way, and that's to be in the first resurrection. You have to be beheaded, keeping the faith, keeping the faith, Torah, okay, 
and the testimony of the Messiah and beheaded for refusal of the mark of the beast. If you qualify on all three of those conditions, you can be in the first resurrection. And there will be a large number that are in the first resurrection. Okay, So that is one group, but they don't leave on the Exodus. But we see them at the end of Revelation 12, when after the water comes out, which we haven't got to yet. Okay, Because again, this is a timeline thing. We're going to go through this thing bit by bit. Um, the rest of us are leaving around that Passover. And I say around because we have in Matthew 24, when the abomination of desolation occurs, which I haven't got to when that should happen, okay? But <clears throat> when the abomination of desolation happens, those who are in Judea flee, which means that the abomination happens just before Passover. And we'll be able to define that. Um, I'm gonna actually put you to another teaching where I define that here at a later time. So that you can see exactly when that will happen. And again, when I say exactly, we realize it can be off by a day because of uh, the moon. You know, it's the start of the month or any time. Uh, and for our holy days, we have to see the moon in Jerusalem. So everything's able to be switched over one day. You know, it's, it's always within a, a period of time, you know. And so we can be off one day or one day. Um, now, the next thing on our timeline happened, um, and so that should have been it for 2017 of what happened. The next thing is in 2018, and that is the red heifer was born on September 4, 2018. Now, this red heifer is able to be sacrificed on September 5, 2020, and can be sacrificed anytime up to September 4, 2021. It can't be used if it's too old, it can't be used if it's too young. Now, the red heifer sacrifice is in Numbers 19.2. To start the altar, now again, if the, if the, if the Antichrist or the Anti-Messiah is going to, I, I prefer to use the Antichrist, it just, um, but if the Antichrist is going to uh, stop the morning and evening sacrifices to be the abomination that causes desolation, they have to actually be doing the morning and evening sacrifices. I mean, I hope that makes sense. He can't stop something that hasn't started. If they're going to try to follow Torah, which they're going to, I think they're going to try in Jerusalem and Israel, then they want to have the red heifer before they start the sacrifices to cleanse the, cleanse the altar. The fact that they have this red heifer, which is an amazing thing, there have only been between seven and nine of these ever sacrificed. And they don't know the true number, whether it's seven or nine. But whatever it is, this is number eight or it's number ten. Okay? So it's such a special animal because there's all these other requirements that happen with the red heifer. It can have two hairs that are not red. It can never have any, you know, it can never be led by a rope um, except for an aspect of safety. It can never have even a blanket thrown on its back. It can't have ever had a burden on it. So it's an amazing thing. So it always has to be watched by the rabbis. And they are watching this animal intently. Well, amazingly, this is about a seven months before that Passover that we kind of identified that they're somewhere within that seven month period, they're able to sacrifice this heifer, red heifer, and cleanse the altar and start the morning and evening sacrifices. Um, so sometime after September 5th, 2020, sometime after that, we don't, I doubt they're going to do it on the September 5th, but sometime after that is when that should happen. <clears throat> so from September, uh, from September 5th, 2020 until March 27th, 2021 is 203 days. So they have that period of time to sacrifice the animal. The altar does not have to be up and running, but for one day, if he's going to stop in the morning and the evening, it has to at least have been going on at least one day before he stopped it, right? And so March 27th, it could be March 26th. We don't know. Again, that's a future event. Um, <clears throat> now, one of the things to try to pull out from here, and I could show you this, but I prefer to send you to another teaching than I did because this is the greatest insight, I think, the creator has ever given to me because it's an amazing thing of understanding the Daniel 12 prophecy. 
And so I will send you to my other video where I detail the, the Daniel 12 prophecy so you have a better understanding. But from that, if it's October 12th, 2024, which is the Day of Atonement, which again, remember, could be October 11th, we don't know. Again, it will depend upon when things happen that, that month in that future year. If we subtract 1335 days, it should be February 15th, 2021. That is when the entity who will be the Antichrist, because the Antichrist comes from, from the pit, so he possesses a body. So it's the body, when that body crosses the River Jordan to attack Israel, that should be Feb uh, February 15th, 2021. And remember, <clears throat> that can be off a day, but probably no more than a day. Um, and so at that point in time, we're all gone, except for those who are in the first resurrection. Because the Passover, which when we, that's the day that we will all leave. Um, now the Passover is very interesting that year because of when it hits to determine what day we have for first fruits. It could be a week later, it could be the next day for first fruits. Um, but I think it's gonna be uh, April 4th. And that's when those who are in the 144,000 should be at Mount Sinai. However, recognize that depending upon when that day hits, it's possible that it could be like the following day after we leave. So those who are in the 144,000 may be um, at Mount Sinai within a day or two, or again, at most a week. They, the 144,000 are gonna come from those, there's a portion of that that's gonna come from Judea so the, those people who are in Judea who have left when the abomination occurred, which should be about four days before the Passover, when they leave through the um, Mount of Olives splits in half and they go through it. And that's in Zechari um, Zechariah 14. Um, when they go through it, they're in one group as they leave and then their group splits apart. And one part of that will go to Mount Sinai immediately. The rest of them will take a little bit longer to get there. When we, in the land, when we leave, which will be on Passover, we leave all at one time, and we, our group will separate, and those who are in the 144,000 will go, and they will get to Mount Sinai, and the rest of us are going to go by ship. They're going to go by ship as well, which is actually defined in Isaiah, and their ship is a flying ship, which we would think of as an airplane. Um, the rest of us are going to go by ship, Deuteronomy 28, 68, and we will then go to Egypt. They will try to sell us into slavery. Don't worry about it because it, we won't be there long, very shortly, and then we will go out. I'm quite certain we would cross the Red Sea again as we go through the bottom section of the tribal land, underneath the land of Gad, Zebulon, and Issachar um, as we go over to, to Mount Sinai. So, at Mount Sinai, all four of these groups, those in the 144,000 from Judea, those in the 144,000 from everywhere else, who are already at Mount Sinai getting prepared, and then everybody else from Judea and everybody else from the rest of the world, they all come and they join, and we have all four groups at that point in time are all together. The only addition at that point in time to that group um, and that group will pick up people, but not pick up people that are going to be tribal unless somebody marries in. And the only ones I see marrying in are those who are in Israel um, who decide, I don't want to go to who have remained in Israel. Or maybe they will become exiles and they want to marry in. They could come in. But other than that, um, the only one that's coming in are those in the first resurrection. And they come in at the end, at that future day of atonement, the first resurrection. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, now, the other thing that will happen as we leave is the sixth seal. You know, they have not completed the seventh seal because the seventh seal is the 144,000. That happens after we leave. So the sixth seal is 
when we leave. Now there's a couple things that are really interesting here. And we get this in Revelation 6. And so I want to kind of go through a couple of things that are happening because this is going to give people um, an understanding of how the seals are going to play themselves out. Um, and the way to think about this is to think about the death of the Messiah on the cross 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> Revelation 6.12, I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. Yeah, earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to earth as figs dropped from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the, this is verse 15, then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They call to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can withstand it? So a um, couple things that really pop off the page from this, okay? When we look at the death of the Messiah, uh, Matthew 27, uh, the sun turned black like, uh, like sackcloth. Uh, Matthew 27, 45, darkness over the land. Mark 14. 1533, darkness over the land. Luke 2344, darkness over the land. And Luke 2345, the sun stopped shining. And in Matthew 2754, earthquake. Now compare that to the sixth seal. Doesn't that not kind of line up? Okay. Um, now, so what also happens though is if you think about it, is when do people leave their homes and say, it's over, I want to live in a cave? after we've left. So we'll still be, that's why things catch people unaware. They're not prepared for it because these things from the seals don't really blow up in their face. You know, again, where you think of the 25% the who die from the fourth uh, angel of the apocalypse, he just says he's got authority. So in other words, he started, but he hasn't knocked out 25%. He doesn't have to knock out 25% at that time, he can do it at a later time because he has authority to do it, okay? And that's a huge issue uh, um, that he has authority. So the people are not out of their homes until after we've left. And once we've left, then Katie bar the door. Things are gonna happen and there nothing is good on the earth at that point in time. You know, think of Lot and Lot's wife. Excuse me, when she turned back, we don't wanna be turning back. You know, you don't want to say, oh, man, I had it really good in, you know, Virginia or I had it really good in Italy where I was living or, you know, Australia. I really had it good there. Uh, those things may not even be in existence at that point in time. Once we leave, they're being ravaged off the face of the earth. There's nothing to go back to. Our eyes should be looking forward. Okay. Um, now, again... When should we leave or arrive at Mount Sinai? Now, in Exodus 19.1, they arrived at Mount Sinai on the first day of the third month. That should be right around May 10th, 2021. So that's when all of our groups, except for those in the first resurrection, should get together. Um, and the next question that has to play into this is, okay, we have those dates. When, if, let's assume for a moment that I'm left behind, when can I actually die to actually come into that first resurrection? And the answer to that is Revelation 14, 13. Then I heard a voice say from, from heaven, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will restore rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them. That's after the seventh trumpet judgment. So to actually be in the first resurrection, you have to survive the entire trumpets. It's not going to be an easy thing to do. But many will do it. But it's not going to be easy to survive that. So when you hear later on from Revelation, um, in Revelation 12, 17, when the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, 
those who kept God's commands and hold fast, hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Revelation 12, 17 should be the end of the seventh trumpet. So he's able to go and then <clears throat> wage war against all the people who survived, who are keeping the faith, keeping Torah, and following the Messiah, and then behead them. And we get to Revelation 2 in that church. How long are they going to be in jail? Ten days, and he'll kill them. He's going to cut their head off. So, and you could say, well, man, people don't cut our heads unless you're around a Muslim country. At that point in time, we have went through three years of the Great Tribulation. Heads are going to roll. You know, it's going to be martial law. It's going to be run by the Antichrist at that time. So, yeah, they'll do it because they've just lived through hell on earth, literally. Um, now, the last days here to worry about here are when is trumpets and when the Messiah should return. That should be October 3rd, 2024. I remember it can be off by a day, depending upon the, the moon. The Day of Atonement, October 12th, 2024. Again, it could be off by a day, depending upon the moon. That's when those in the first resurrection should come up. And Sukkot, when we finally go in to live in the land um, from, with the Messiah. Now again, this is a precursor to the ultimate thing, which is when heaven comes to earth. That's set October 17th to 24th of 2024. And again, remember, that can be off by a day, but only by about a day. Those are the Revelation 12 timeline. It is totally dependent on what we saw in the sky of September 23rd, 2017, being the correct sign. Um, we won't know that until that Passover, when we, or actually until the abomination is when we'll know. Uh, up until then, we're watching. This is the greatest sign that's ever been out there. It doesn't mean it's correct. It just, everything happens to, to lock in and match up right now. But until the anti-Messiah is revealed, these are just things that are amazingly coincidental. Uh, do I think this is when it's going to happen? Oh, yeah. I really do. Um, and there's just too much evidence that's, that, that there are those waking up all the time. There are too many of us waking up, and we're ready to go home. And I personally want out of Babylon. So the earlier I can get out of Babylon and go home, the better. Um, but that's the timeline um, from Revelation 12. And hopefully you found this interesting. I know it's long. I know it's, and I know I can be boring. So it is what it is on that. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you that information. But again, remember, nothing happens until we see the abomination. But I think we can even see what date the, they'll come in to Israel to invade to do the, the abomination. So we should know it beforehand. You know, Noah was, he knew when the flood was going to occur. He had the ark built. He obeyed, he got out. Lot knew when they were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He, he listened, he got out. His wife wanted to look back, and that didn't turn out too well. Um, but, you know, and again, if, on the first Exodus, Moses told them, this is when we're going to leave. This is when the death is going to occur. Be prepared. Have your shoes on. Have your staff in your hand. Cloak on. Ready to go. When, and when they, did they leave? They left just when they, he said. They obeyed. They put the, the blood on the doorpost. They knew enough to listen and obey. The issue falls with us. Are we going to listen and obey? And there are, you know, this is just a timeline. This is just something to put it in your head. You better be prepared. You better be ready on that Passover and follow the full rules on that Passover. There are a lot of other things that still apply, such as when the angel comes to get us, and the angel will come to get us at Passover. How do you treat that angel? That's something of learning and prepping and understanding. Um, things that you need to take with you on the Exodus. And... We all know about Sukkot, so we're all pretty much prepared on that, except for, are you prepared for the manna? 
You know, this is just a timeline issue. And you can look on, I've got other videos to prepare you for those things we don't really think of, excuse me, think about, such as, you know, your, your grinder for the mana, um, you know, having a shovel with, with you. These little things that you have to have with you. And it's also good to have uh, water canteens and have more is even better. You know, so you can feed your flocks because we'll start getting flocks on the X's. Those are things of preparation and of listening and obeying the Creator. This is a timeline, just a timeline to help you understand these things are coming to fruition. Now, it may not be on this particular timeline, but it probably is. But we won't know until the Antimessiah is revealed.